It's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Hey, everybody. It is Wednesday, March the 16th. I'm Emerson Collins. And I'm Del Shores. And you're listening to The, the Del, Del and Emerson, Emerson Show. Show. Straight talk. Okay. Oh, my God. Del Shores is actually I'm back. I'm here. It feels like you were gone forever. Do you feel that I got a little butcher on the road? No. That you know, no. Oh. <laughs> You said that way too quick. Yeah, just, quickly. I didn't have to even think about it. I uh, didn't feel any different. That's like, would you write that? It would be no beat. No, nope, no, <laughs> no beat. No beat. Instant. D- responds instantly and dryly. Well, I had a great time out there. I did a lot of shows in Florida and, you know, before that, Louisiana and Arkansas and uh, what else? Louisiana I, and Mississippi. So, so I've, been much. Out, I've been out there. It's been fun. How I, was it down in Trump country? Oh, my goodness. What is, well, this is just crazy. I and mean, I we'll was, get to that. Let's I, come. I know, but. I was there during a lot of it, and it was cra- it was really crazy. I was in Florida when nobody showed it at Rubio, but I had such a great time. I tell you, we've got some good fans out there. We've got some amazing people who come and support. There's so many people excited about our movie, A Very Sorted Wedding. I actually stopped off in Atlanta, and one of our investors, Stephen, and my friend Matt and Joey hosted a beautiful uh, investor cocktail party, and uh, we got, got to meet uh, Dino and Robin, and Lee was there. There were so many people that are supporting us. So, and we're so close. We are so we close. We are so close. Y'all, we got the dates in May in Canada picked out. Like, we are wishing and a hoping and a praying and bringing it all together. Like, we are really like 25 to 50,000 away from a green light. So, if you've been listening to us talk about this for the last year and been thinking, you know, maybe at some point. Now is that time. It now really is. That is. Time. Write you, us. We'll send you the information packet, but it would, just a handful more people, and off we go. I'm telling you, if you came in with 25 grand, uh, uh, that we would, we would be, you would be such a hero. All of our investors are our heroes. We we love you so much for believing in this project because we believe in this project. It's about it, it speaks to equality, and it also makes you laugh. And I think we need, uh, I need we need a little message Lord, through laughter, don't, don't we? we? Um, but we have a super exciting show and an incredibly special guest joining us oh. in the studio at this time. Uh, he is a dear friend of ours personally, but he is an incredibly phenomenally gifted singer and songwriter and actor and blogger and activist and thinker and so many titles. He's one of those that there's so many slashes in his name that it just rolls off the edge of the page. Just a hyphen it. Levi Christ is uh, will be joining us in the Tony studio. Tony Award winning Levi Christ, and we go so far back with with Levi uh, to when he was singing at the end of uh, Southern Baptist. Sissies with Emerson on stage. He truly is like our brother. I, I was thinking about that today. He's staying with me right now. He's my house guest, and he and his his, his husband Jason, and we love them, and, and we love Levi, and he is such a he. he he's family. He's really truly Near family. And dear to my heart. Yeah. So, so we will bring him in shortly, but shall we rattle through some of the news? Now yeah, that let's I finally go for have Dell back, and I can just be the the co the co chair. I got out of the hot seat. Yeah, let's do it. All right, and our quality update: Missouri is in the process of. Passing passing one of those uh, religious freedom anti-LGBT bills that we have been warning you about. Last week, an incredibly impressive thing happened. There was a 39-hour filibuster in the Missouri State Senate by people opposing this bill that would give certain religious organizations and individuals from being penalized by the state because of their sincere religious belief or practices concerning marriage between persons of the same sex. It is specifically about bigotry towards LGBT people when it comes to marriage. Well, it did finally pass the House, I mean, excuse me, the Senate, uh, and it heads over to the House as well, and if it passes, which it likely will, the Republican-dominated legislature, it would go on the ballot in Missouri in November. So, something to keep an eye on uh, while the national presidential election is sucking all the air out of the content room to continue to pay attention to these bills. And the best way to hit them, I think, is by saying, hey, we're going to not come there. Uh, Organizations, uh, charities, whatever, just uh, conventions, don't go uh, while they're doing this. You know, it's it's, it's a good way it's sure, certainly got some other states' attention, right? Yeah, well, and hopefully, and even more importantly, we can head it off in advance by yeah, supporting uh, the local communities and organizations there. So keep an eye out uh, for ways to assist. It shut down the trans bathroom bill in South Dakota due to outcry.
cry from around the rest of the country. So you can make your voice heard even in places that you don't live. Yeah, when you see those petitions, and I get them all the time, you know, uh, well, we have a little conflicting it's, thing. No, it's that. fine. I think any support is good support. You know what? Is, and I've said this before, but worth repeating, because I hadn't been here in four weeks. I, it, it, it creates an energy. It, it, any of that does create an energy. You put it on Facebook, you, I do share those things, and it, I, I think it, 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 it does help. So if nothing else, it makes us aware. Yes. All right, and moving on. Florida just wasted a whole bunch of time as Governor Rick Scott just signed into law essentially a pastor protection bill last week specifying that clergy don't have to marry same-sex couples in Florida. Uh, newsflash, they didn't have to before. Yeah, and they, who the fuck wants them to? They went who, to if, if you, you, I mean, re- truly, if, if you're going to go to your husband and say, hey, anti-gay bigot asshole, would you marry us? No, I, I go somewhere else. Um, And so they wasted a whole lot of time uh, reinforcing something that is already the case. Um, A number of their opponents said that it was essentially the ability of to politically posture uh, to reinforce their opposition to marriage equality by showing that they would pass something like this. So, yeah. oh, Florida. It's always Florida. It really is. I, I mean, but, but in and that, you had a great time I'm there. I'm telling you, we, there is such an amazing community there of, of allies and gay support. So it, it's not just about the hanging chats. <laughs> and and, and Mark Alders. You know what worries me about that phrase? <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. A disproportionate number of chads are homosexuals. And we need Talk about hanging chads. It just sounds like we're lynching homosexuals. Well, yeah. Or hung. I want the hung chads. You want the hung ones. (laughs) Yeah. See, not hanging chads. Hung chads. I I, I think I... Well, never mind. Um, Uh, But Lord, we send good thoughts and prayers and wishes to all of you uh, open-minded people in Florida because we do know what it's like to be from a place that seems to continuously be in the news for uh, ridiculous and Yes, we are going to get on our knees and we're going to pray this time. Oh, this (laughs) once. I don't make that promise. Shall we flash through the gay news? Let's do it. Oh, we got the one million moms. While you start this... I'm going to find out how many they have they, on Facebook I, right I now. I saw today it was 87,000 something, if I'm not mistaken. 83,993. Oh, oh, I gave them 4,000 more. That was so generous I, of you. I, I, so they're, they're coming after the real O'Neills. Uh, the real O'Neills mock Christianity and insult Catholicism. Uh, and they recon- uh, the, the, the 83,000 uh-huh. moms <laughs> recognize this show and rid- that ridicules faith, people of faith, uh, and Christians across Americans are offended by it. And so um, I um, decided that I would like to uh, list their offenses in one of the characters uh, that I have created that I feel is uh, a, a million dollar mom who is on that uh, page of 83. And her name is Dottie. Perfect. And here's what Dottie says. She says, okay, Jesus appears where only the gay son can see and talk to him. And he is annoyed by the mom's strict guidelines for her family. That's offense number one. Number two, the daughter steals money she is supposedly raising for charity. The daughter, this is number three, offense number three, attempts to prove that there is no God in a science fair project. That's That one just broke my heart. And then number four, ABC Network refu- refers to this highly dysfunctional family as the perfect Irish Catholic family. I mean, What? And then uh, number five, a statue of Mary is kept above the O'Neill's toilet to remind the boys to put the seat down. Can you believe that, John? And then, um, I'm, I'm lost. Is it six? Six. The first jab at Jesus comes only 52 seconds into the first episode. They could have at least waited a minute and six seconds. The mother, this number seven, encourages her 16-year-old gay son to try sex with a girl. A, 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 a dash is used uh, to bypass internet filters. What does that mean? They I wrote, they wrote S dash X. Oh, I see. And then vulgar language. Vulgar language, they say vagina. And the mom makes pancakes shaped like the face of Jesus to guilt trip her anorexic son into eating. Oh, it just gets worse and worse. And finally, one of the show's producers is anti Christian bigot Dan Savage. And the show is said to be loosely based on his life. That's it for me. That was real good. It's real appropriate. You know, I have watched every episode of this show so far. We watched the first episode for The People's Couch, and genuinely, it's one of the funniest things on television right now to me. One, it's extremely smart. Two, they're managing to walk an amazingly fine line between Martha Plimpton as in her genius as the mother, between not approving and still loving her son, which I think is the experience of a lot of LGBT people. If they 
if you weren't outright disowned or kicked out, there was that, well, I love you, but I wish this wasn't the case sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And she manages to do it in a way where you uh, s- can relate to her point of view. You don't hate her, which right. it would be really easy to do. And Noah that plays the son is just absolutely brilliant. I got so much catching up to TV to, while I was gone. It's just all in my DVR right now. So I cannot wait to see this. The and- jokes are surprising. They uh, aren't relying on, they play with, expected stereotypes and flip them on their head and it's really really wonderful portrayal of a family that truly loves each other that's dealing with some things that they weren't really necessarily prepared to deal with when it started all right little trivia tiny little trivia uh did you know hollywood royalty that martha plimpton is keith carradine's daughter i did not she is Yes. Well, I, I see. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the, the Carradine. She's the car, she's part of the Carradines. Come on. Well, all right. All right. I'm, doesn't it have anything to do it with my enjoyment of this television show. Do. <laughs> you don't like my little bullshit trivia that I just I, I store in my head for I all am, these years. I am so glad that that will give you a tiny bit more enjoyment when you get you to watch the television You don't care that Gilbert show. O'Sullivan had the number one song of '72, Alone not. Again, Naturally. No, see, who, who else is. knows that? And I number don't. ten was Brandy. You're fine. Girl. Well, okay. Thank goodness. All right, let's move guys. on. Uh, you'd be great at Barney's Beanery in one of those trivia competitions. No, I, that is interesting. Um, all right, flashing <laughs> on. Shall we dive into yesterday's events? I want to head back to last week and talk for a minute about uh, the comments that I'm sure that all of you have seen because there, there have been a number of developments in this story. And Friday at Nancy Reagan's funeral, uh, Hillary Clinton was speaking extemporaneously and said and about the positive attributes of Nancy Reagan and said how difficult it was for people to talk about HIV AIDS back in the 1980s because of both President and Mrs. Reagan, in particular Mrs. Reagan, we started a national conversation when before nobody would talk about it, nobody wanted to do anything about it. She went on to talk about it as sort of uh, low-key advocacy. Advocacy, excuse me. There was, of course, instantly and immediately an enormous response from the LGBT community, particularly uh, the people that either are living with HIV or who lost people during the early Mm -hmm. years of the AIDS crisis, that that is definitively inaccurate. And in fact, the vast majority of the HIV AIDS awareness community considers the, the, the slow pace of President Reagan's willingness to comment on it contributed to uh, it spreading further because it wasn't being taken seriously as a national health crisis at the time. Um, She tweeted shortly later, while the Reagans were strong advocates for stem cell research and finding a cure for Alzheimer's disease, I misspoke about their record on HIV and AIDS. For that, I'm sorry. Now, then there was an interesting sort of thing that happened, and this is sort of the my frustration with the current political climate, just sticking on the liberal side. There were a whole lot of people who immediately said, she apologized, she misspoke, it's over, let's move on. There were a whole lot of other people who said, there's a difference between misspeaking, whereas like I got a year wrong or I got a date wrong, and fundamentally not understanding how the early years of the AIDS crisis played out. Uh, This sort of seemed to demonstrate to that group of people that you definitely weren't aware of it at the time. Um, And then there was sort of this reaction of, well, she's still our best ally and best advocate going forward, so like just dismiss it and move on. And... I found that it sort of broke down to people who were Hillary supporters were inclined to say an apology was enough and move on. And people that are not were more inclined to say that's not enough. This doesn't acknowledge the long history. On Saturday night, 24 hours later, she put out an extremely long response that very definitively addressed the specifics of the situation. She gave credit to ACT UP and the Gay Men's Health Crisis Center uh, for the early days and gave the credit to the advocates and talked a lot about her plan and the need to remove stigma uh, going forward. And she even mentioned PrEP in that response on Saturday night. And I found myself sort of frustrated with everyone a little bit that there was a lack of acknowledgement as though with Hillary the likely candidate that it is not that it is incumbent upon us not to criticize You know, people were saying, well, look at what's happening on the other side. We have to all band together no matter what. Well, I think as someone's moving forward to be a leader, it is okay to still say, whoa, you really, really screwed up today. That's really not okay. I agree. And then you need to fix it. And then once it is fixed and addressed, you weigh that factor in with all the other factors and move on uh, to choosing to support or not support a candidate. But I don't think asking people to willy nilly go, well, she 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 made a mistake. I don't think that. No, you have to. That was a tiny mistake. That is not a tiny mistake. And it, it made me think, well, she didn't see the normal heart. She certainly didn't do her. I mean, somebody 
I don't know. It seems like her team didn't do their work either. I mean, did she just come up with this? I mean, how somebody told her this. They had to. Well, I, I honestly think, I mean, she knows so much about so many things. She probably was speaking based on her perception, and some people wrote great defenses of that, that at the time, many people weren't aware of it playing out. If you were in the 80s and, you know, a young attorney, right. you and didn't, and didn't have and a lot of familiar... And you were a part of this community. Yeah, with gay men yes. at the time who were where it was predominantly existing. You may you may have a perception that's not in an accordance with reality of what happened at the time. I don't think that's at fault. Um, I think they clearly educated her quickly. But where I go to is, one, I think the second apology is a result of how many people said a tweet apology is not enough. Right. So I think that's a great reaction that supports holding people accountable is a good and positive thing, even if you're going to continue to support and them. And she did well with that. And here's what also I, I, I think is very positive about this, is that, you know, in our community, there are lots of people who do not know the history. Once you get a certain age, I mean, I was I was around during the Reagan administration. I know how horrible he was and, and how much that administration was to blame about, didn't even say the word for, for years and years and years. But there's a lot of people in our community who weren't even aware of this yeah. who didn't and so suddenly but by her mistake let's look at the positive her mistake created a positive outpour yeah. of education for many many people that was all over the internet and i also go to you know there's a lot of for example say trans issues which it was frankly two years ago as we're starting our radio show that i really began to educate myself on that so there's a lot of the history of specific trans things that i would not know if someone were to suddenly ask me a thing you know i'm much more aware of what's happened in the last two years while i've been really focusing on it um and i would still want to speak positively in support of the community and certainly hillary's record and what she's done for hiv aids internationally with the State Department and with AMFAR, that there is a lot of work to support that she will clearly be a good advocate. So, but I think... The- I, I understand what you're saying. It's like you went to that convention last year. You probably would not have done that if right. we weren't here and have it. This is our job yeah. now, part of so, our job. So I, I don't fault that she may not have known what was happening in those early years while she was doing other things, and I think educating quickly, and it did. And not only that, it forced, it caused Bernie Sanders the next day to release his own HIV AIDS campaign on his website, which he had had nothing about. You're she right. had already had things in her platform on her website about it, and if uh, and I don't want to get into the jaded, well, of course he did it because they were talking about it. Yeah, he did, but they've both done that. I think that's the goal, is pushing candidates well, to push each other. Cruz didn't do anything. He did not. He did. But uh, I, my overall frustration is the willingness of some people at the immediate moment to say... Well, it doesn't matter. She's still the best choice, so let's just not even talk about it or address it or whatever. She's all we have, so so don't say, like, just support her. We're all in this together. And on the flip side, people at the other end, after the really long and involved apology that's created a lot of awareness, aren't willing to say, okay, I can factor that mis- what is now a mistake that's been rectified into it. Does that make sense? Well, like, yes. Both extremes uh, they, they, are driving are. me crazy. And there's always a lack of forgiveness yes. in, in our community. We're, we're, we're very hard. It's like, you know, there's, a, there, there's that whole faction that's never going to be on the Hillary train because she came too late to the party. But you know what? She's here now and, um, when I'm I'm on that train with her. Well, in she, fact, I'm just I, I'm endorsing her right now. I endorse. Look her at you, so. ladies and gentlemen. We'll send out so, a special press release that, please, this that, afternoon. I'm sure Del that Shores it will be has officially up endorsed everywhere. Hillary Clinton. It's going to be all over to uh, CNN. Del Shores has well, who who? He's a minor gay celebrity. There it is. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, yes. Yeah, so yesterday it was a big, and oh, let's. I'll be honest. I can't wait until the prom. Like, let's just wait a little. Well, yeah, well, next I week mean, or the next week, we'll do okay. some more. Of this okay, stuff. we'll do some That's updates. Enough. I'm obsessed. My obsession is a lot. And uh, uh, anyway, let's let's move on. Flashing got, on. Oh, this is so awful. A church has canceled Easter rather than celebrate with the gays. What are they going to do with all those eggs? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which ones? The ones you died. They're oh. died. Just sitting there sad. I thought the gay man's Not eggs. Get died. Okay. The Stockton Leadership Foundation in Stockton, just outside of San Francisco, th- this is so weird, has held Easter services for nearly 20 years. Well, the Reverend Bud Locke, you know he came from Alabama, Bud, he accidentally allowed an invitation to go to Valley Ministries, a small church with LGBT members. When he realized it, he emailed Reverend Terry Miller at Valley Ministries to disinvite them. Uh, well, the word got around. The gays gasped externally and got upset, and then he re-invited him. But then he just said, uh, however you say fuck it in a Christian way, he said, uh, we're going to just cancel Easter service because it's just getting too much publicity. <laughs> so, it is just such a great example of that, like, when Christians don't act like a Christian... 
It's like you invited some people and then uninvited them to Easter. First of all, aren't Easter and Christmas the days when churches are most likely to get new members? And can't why people that only go twice a year? Yeah, and what happened to I mean, okay, let's just go back to the basis of, of you know, the the, the proselyta- proselytation. Is that the right did I say that word? The proselyta- Close enough. Proselytation of how churches recruit. Okay, how churches recruit. Well, c- couldn't they save those poor gays from uh, utter damnation if they just got them in the door? I mean, what, what happened to that philosophy? That's we- what you call ironic, because it's literally <laughs> the reason he hung on the cross. <laughs> literally the reason. Exactly. Like, that's what you're there to celebrate down that Via Dolorosa up to Golgotha. I'm picturing Sandy Patty singing in my head, are you right now, Via Dolorosa? I was, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, oh, in that... Old, oh, that, no, 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 God, if you, I'll tell you, the best thing you can do as a former Baptist boy is to get a little stoned, go on YouTube, and watch Sandy <laughs> Patty just <clears throat> sing. I don't it, need to be stoned to cry. do that. I'll plug it into the television. I was talking to John. You know she's on. <laughs> She knows she's on a church tour. She does church tours. And our friend uh, Blake that regularly going. hosts the show. Well, the problem is she doesn't go west to Colorado on her we're, church tours. We're fucking driving. I'm not to driving see, a road trip I, to Colorado we'll, to we'll see fly. Sandy Patty. We'll fly on no, Spirit. I, They've got very cheap flight. No, we're not going on Spirit. No. She, well, I wish she'd do a airline. live stream so we could tune in and just plug it in on the TV. That'd be better. We're going to cast her in something. We love Sandy Patty. Okay, I don't shall like we? that would work out shall well. We? Flashing on! Just a fun, quick little story because I love uh, seeing the way LGBT young people engage with the world. Last week, Instagram launched its first ever Explore channel specifically dedicated to spotlighting LGBT youths under the hashtag Visible Me. It was created by YouTube personality Raymond Braun, who I am an enormous fan of. He uh, works strongly in the modern edge of social media. And he launched hashtag Visible Me on the same day he was profiled for Out 100. So through his uh, pushing that out there, Instagram has created a whole channel specifically designed for that. So you can use that hashtag on Instagram uh, and it'll be collected with all the other photos of LGBT people. And I love that. Yeah, me too. And this is a personal story. I've got a good friend that's in Charlotte, North Carolina, and there is something that's happening there and I know other places to older gay men on Grinder. And what they're doing is they're being the, 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 there is a young con artist are on Grinder and they're taking advantage of these young these older men pretending they're in love with them, uh, really saying all the right things to get uh, into their lives. And this ended so badly and is probably, frankly, going to end with an arrest because there was a stealing of bank accounts, there was a stealing of of, of uh, actual uh, things, I mean items and, and shopping sprees that were just uh, then... Uh, the, the it turned ugly. I, I, I'm trying, I, you, you say I'm being cautious with my words because it's not over yet, but I just wanted to say quickly... You know, be careful. We always say be careful on these social apps. But older, older, older guys, I get it all the time because, you know, I'm of an age now where it goes, are you gen, G-E-N, are you generous? Just beware that they're out there and they're, they're, they're trying to extort. A lot of people are trying to extort money. And he went to the Charlotte Police Department because he's brave enough to do that. But how many people are shame, uh, ashamed to do it when it happens to them? They said that they had six cases in the last three months. Of, of, of young uh, gay men or, 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 or gay for pay extorting from older men. So, y'all, just, just, just a warning, and I'm glad that uh, I'm, I'm very sorry it happened to my friend, but I'm glad that he was willing to allow me to talk about it on the air to help other people. Well, and it goes back to all the assault stories we've done related to, you know, just be smart about the way you use the Internet. <clears throat> for dating, it's, it can be an incredibly advantageous thing in your life, but be aware uh, that there are risks, even from seemingly likable and normal people I in loved an engagement. What, what you said when you used to, you know, back in the day where you would actually. You oh, had I had a, somebody that I told where I was going, right. no matter what, when I'm, if anybody was from the internet, just in case. You yeah. know, that first meeting in a public place, those kind of things. And if you're taking advantage of a late night opportunity, have a buddy that you text a phone number or an address to and say, I'll text you when I'm done. Just, just to be on the safe side. All right. So there you go. That's a, that. That's a, that's our little PSA for today. Um, and All right. Go, let's go. In our trans segment, first some exciting news. Uh, the 
President Barack Obama has appointed Rafi Friedman Gerspin as the White House's primary LGBT liaison, making her the first transgender person to hold that role for the White House. So that's a really exciting thing, uh, moving forward in visibility for the trans community. Before we move on to the hot topic uh, that continues around the world of Caitlyn Jenner, have you watched any of this season of I Am Kate I have yet? not been able to. I've only seen clips on YouTube and, and read about it because I've been on the road. Well, we impossible. talked last week about the first episode, but the second episode that just aired is the one that is the more recent quotes you've probably seen uh, that Caitlyn got in an extremely heated argument with the other women on the bus as they right. are making their uh, transcontinental tour. Uh, they're not calling it that, but I just like it because it fits with the name. Uh, about Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton that led uh, to... Kate Bornstein asking her, Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump? And Caitlin said, I would never, ever, ever, ever vote for Hillary. If Hillary becomes president, the country is over. She called her a lousy senator, a fucking liar, a political hack, and blaming her actions as Secretary of State for troubles in the Mid Middle East, and went on to say, just because I'm a woman now doesn't make me all of a sudden a liberal. Uh, aggressively to the degree that Candace Kane walked out of the discussion, Kate walked Good out of the uh, discussion, but um, and Jenny Boylan wasn't actually in the room at that point, but they talked later about how they engage with each other in heated disagreements but it's caused a very interesting public reaction because you well it did and uh, you know when <laughs> when i heard that and then when she they they asked her who she and you said it wasn't a, an official endorsement but they said who are you looking to and she said cruz it just made my blood boil and i have been defending caitlin and saying oh she's going to evolve and but you know and we're going to watch her evolve and we have to be patient and i at that point i i just had had it i was in wilton manners doing a show and i basically publicly said, fuck Caitlyn Jenner. I'm tired of defending you while I'm fighting for your rights. You're going to say that you are considering voting for the most hateful anti-LGB candidate that we have. So fuck you. I quoted Julie, Julie Goldman from our show. I said, Bruce Jenner was an asshole. Caitlyn Jenner is an asshole. I'm sure I'm going to get hate because I'm saying that right now, but I'm, I've, I'm, I'm fed up with her. I'm tired of it. And, and then she, you know, then now after we, 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 you, you put the show together, she then released on Twitter a picture of her and we've got it here of her and, um, and Hillary and, and the girls. And she uh, tweeted a learning from my girls willing to listen. So then I go back to, oh, well, maybe I was wrong to say that on stage. Here's you know, my but, frustration with the with the community reaction to it. Well, if you don't want to like her, don't like her. That's fine. But I go back to what we are seeing in this presidential election that I think I Am Kate, the TV series, is showing a microcosm of this, is I think people are continuously jaw-dropped at the number of people supporting Donald Trump. I and am, I think yes. that shows the division in our country. And the problem is, this is our reaction to those people. We say, fuck you, I'm done with you. And if we, and we don't talk across that divide because I, my, I, I think the most important thing about the show being on television is watching Dr. Jenny Boylan continue to engage in these conversations with Caitlin because we have to be able to do that. At the root of that, she said, I love her. We fundamentally disagree well on this. But being willing to talk across the division in those issues, because regardless of what happens in this election, we are in one of the most divisive periods in our country's history. And so half of the country is going to be furious at whatever the result is. And while I think it feels good to say I'm done with you, I think we're reaching the point where as a country, we can't afford to say that about people that we disagree with that extremely anymore. I think Caitlin being willing to say, I'm willing to listen is an important thing. All right, well, what is she not willing to do? Do her own fucking research. That's what she's not willing to do because all you have to do is put Ted Cruz trans and you will get all, or anti-trans comments and you will get all the things that he has said against her. Basically, so when is she forgetting to use Google? Why doesn't she do that? Why is it up to the, these women to educate her completely, or us to watch, or us to educate her? She needs to start educating herself because if she wants to be a part of our community, if she wants us to embrace her show and keep those ratings where they were instead of where they are, then when is it her turn to step up to the plate just a little bit more? Well, that's great if you care about her specifically, but my point is the world at large. I got like, it. Like, that's I great. Like, that. you, we can preach that sermon at Caitlyn Jenner, but focusing on her misses the point of what's happening in our culture. I mean, that's great. You can say, well, you should do this. But if people are, I understand what, what you're do saying, we do? We were sit talking and wait. about her. I know, but if we just say, well, we're just going to sit and wait for you to go educate yourself, like, that's a great way to not have anything happen. I mean, when you meet I'm not ignorance, saying sit and wait. I'm saying, yes, get educated along the 
the way. But you know what? When you say I don't know what HRC is or something, just, just spend some some time off of Twitter or you know worrying about the Kardashians, uh, you know, next ploy for publicity and see what you can do for our community rather than oh I'm listening to my girls, I'm learning from my girls. Well, learn for yourself. That's literally what she said. As I am listening and learning. I just read. I just said yes. She, she says I'm listening from my girls. Right. But I'm saying there is a time when you need to listen to yourself and and be your your authentic self is who you are now. You finally are honest with the world and saying this is my authentic self. Then know what the 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 uh, the perils are of being a trans woman in this country, other ones as well. And do some do, do some self education. That's all I'm saying. And, right. And, but and, my and, point and, and is, stop making me fight for your rights when you're not fighting for them. If you're going to vote for fucking Cruz, my point is, if you meet ignorance and and the answer is, well, go do it yourself. If they don't, then we either have to wait for them to to do something they're not ever going to do, or we have to continue to be willing to stay in the conversation with people that frustrate us in order to get there faster. All right. Well, I'm gonna. I we, I want to get Levi in here, so let's get off this soapbox for a second. We can return to it later. But but this really does go to like this is the problem in our culture. Like if we get angry and run away from the table from each other, like this is how we are where we are, and because it feels good. I, you know what? How when when did you, when when was Vanity Fair? When was Diane Sawyer? She's like six months or whatever. Yeah, uh, more than that. It's been more than that. I know, but like I'm not a. I'm my, just my saying. I'm is, just saying it's time for right, her to stop some of this shit. Right, but and you're focused on her, but I'm talking about how this represents our culture at large. Like this is what we do: is we get frustrated with the opposing side and walk away. And I don't think we can afford to continue oh, doing that. I don't that. walk away. I mean, I, 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 I. I counter them and I tell them to come to come talk to me. And they come to your show and get a soapbox. No, and they, I mean, you that's what? what they do. All right, you know what? In my show in Wilton Manors, there was not one groan and there was not one boo. Unf- after she did that, I'm telling you, what she's doing is she's alienating uh, the, the, the community that she wants to be a part of. There was applause and people whooping and hollering because of what I said. So she, you know, she needs to realize the repercussions of... Uh, there, there are consequences to our words. Just like there are consequences to my words, there are consequences consequences to the words, which means sometimes low fucking ratings. All right. Yes. And my point is that this show is do one of the only places on television where we're seeing opposing views actually have the conversation that we need to have. I agree with you. That's that, my point. I get it. Because that's get it. my, like, you can so hate her. So you're saying, her, yeah, you can say, you yes. can sit there and hate her and love yes. Jenny Boyle. And, and, I got and it. love the platform that's being it. given to the opposition. But you see, what happens is we get so enraged, like I am right now, that Absolutely. we forget that, that, you know, what you just said, forgot to listen to that for a second. That's really a really great, valid point. So, yes, I will sit there and I will scream and yell at Caitlyn, at Caitlyn Jenner and, and, and love Candace Kane, who's yes. my friend, and I love that she walked out. Yes. We couldn't walk off the bus because it should get hurt but <laughs> she yeah, walked out bless her heart <laughs> all right well all right. i hope you guys are as passionate about it as we are and we're going to take a quick break and bring a levi in and chat about all things wonderful in his world yes absolutely we'll bring this uh, to a little bit of a calmer spirit <laughs> i mean we'll see what mood he's in <laughs> come on let him go Like that 12-year-old whose parents oh. are 
I believe we're back. We're back, and we got Levi Christ in the house. We got so caught Ladies up in talking to each and other. and gentlemen, star of stage and screen, 2010 Tony Award winner. He has been seen in shows across Broadway from Violet and Smokey Joe's Cafe. He was in the National Tour Rand. He started a movie with Matthew McConaughey called Frailty. He's done four studio albums that have played on shows from The Vampire Diaries to Sons of Anarchy and lots of independent films. <gasps> he is in the studio working on his fifth studio album now, Levi Christ. Oh, nice. How's Hello, that? Levi. Yes, we could go on and on, but we want to talk to you as well. I mean, you have a, 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 an incredible uh, uh, biography, and we, we are so happy to have you here. We love you. You're thank our brother, you. and thanks for being crazy. with us today. Eat that microphone like it's a penis. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. With commitment. Uh -huh. yes. 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 So how's life for you these life days? Life is good. Life is fast, and it's so nice to, for the... To have a little stop over here with you guys. That was a heated discussion. It was kind of really exciting. It's important we're really getting passionate exciting. about LGBT yeah, issues. Yeah, I was I was telling I was telling uh, Dell earlier that uh, you know I, I kind of turned to the podcast to get all my LGBT news now. It's like one one stop shop. Well, it's, you know, those people amazing. worry sometimes that like we get mad at each other. But part of the reason we go on and on is I think it's important to hear discussions played out. You know, yeah. when you know that love is at the basis of a disagreement. Yeah. You know, hearing us play out multiple sides. I hope it just encourages you to think deeper into what you feel, whether you're you agree with one or the other or both or you know that's that's an important part of being an active sure. member of the community yeah. and and, and, and take your time to educate yourself and and my god and i mean you're a it. perfect exa example of artistry creates passion i mean when i, we, I i've often said levi you are truly in my estimation, one of like five of the best performers I've ever watched in my life. You're so wow. amazing, and you you you're so passionate about your your words that you that you sing. So I I, I I love your work so much. Thank you. And that includes Sandy Patty. Well, and I think a I'm, lot of that conviction. I, we talk about this all the time. It comes from the church. Yeah. It, it comes from come the from church. The when you learn how, to, you know, like you say in your in your place, sing with conviction. Yeah. You well, know, when you learn that. You know the the art of expressing yourself through music is is from a you know from a, a choir in a Baptist church in the South. I mean, you didn't. You well, one conviction. time I remember a, a conversation we had many many years ago where <laughs> you said I, I said uh, what what besides the church, what's your inspiration? You go you know b black 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 singers, black women singers uh -huh. specifically. I go yeah. oh that makes so much yeah. sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, you know uh, you're very familiar to our audience, so we don't know to need to go through the long backstory of uh, all of your involvement in arts stuff but of course we play stained glass window all the time and everybody knows and here's that but let's talk about where you are now what's exciting you about your current music um i'm kind of picking up where one of the ones my debut album left off you know it's my personal favorite it's a lot of people's personal favorite and i think that was probably one of the in uh, the things that influenced me to to return back to very lyrically insightful piano based pop music that that doesn't try to do any more than be honest you know and talk about life issues and, and I, so I'm digging up some past shit that is not too comfortable deal, uh, talking about past relationships uh, abusive elements of that and trying to articulate them in a way that we all can sort of understand well, I, I love that album as well. And in fact, you know, I always... Well, you named the I album. I know, I named that? the I do. We were walking. And it was, oh God, it was cold that night in New York City. Uh -huh. We're walking down the street. Now, Now Levi is in an amazing, committed relationship. He and his husband, Jason. For, for six and a half years. Six and a half woo, woo. years. I know. I, I love They would have never thought that would and happen. And your me. man is so special. I love him so much. That's but great. back in the day, Levi was my buddy. And every time I would see Levi, he would go, oh my God, I've met the one. He's the one. He's the one. He's <laughs> no. the one. One. This time, he's the one. And I said, Levi, um, you should rephrase that and say oh, one of the ones. In <laughs> fact, the, since uh, I'm going to point to that album because we had just heard like this, uh, the rough of, or, of your album, <laughs> and I said, because every single song is about a different boy, so uh, right. you need to call that album one of the ones. Yeah. So yes, I did. And people name don't that. know what that means <laughs> other than until they know the story. Yeah, it's true. But that is that is truly, uh, and, and I love that you've returned that. We talked, uh, we t returned to that that style of 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 passion and just playing that piano because that's where I think you're at your very very best. It's true. I think it takes some time sometimes for artists to to kind of see through their own uh, need to express themselves in so many different uh, directions and 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 just uh, embrace the sweet spot and try to find that place where it's just an. Um, and encumbered. Well, but also, I mean, I think that's part of every artist's journey. You know, you do some of what you do for you. You do some of it for the people that you yeah. know that you're speaking to. I mean, yeah. I think the journeys that you've been on through the other albums have been really amazing spaces and places. I mean, I think, you know, 
doing what do you got to do it for you first. Yeah. Uh, Because I think that's the root of all art. You can't start from trying to create what other people, what you think other people expect. Because nobody will be happy. You won't be happy with it. Lord knows you can't get up on the stage and do something you don't feel. Well, that's the truth. And there's so stubborn that way. And there's, there's. I mean, I've watched you uh, in in a very natural evolution of your work. Because when I first saw, I mean, a lot of people have heard this story, but I met you at Southern Baptist Sissies. I was sitting behind you with my dear friend Sharon Lane, and you were with our friend Austin, and you lost your shit. You just started crying. In the in before a the fetal first, position like, in the floor, like uh, trembling and, and sobbing. J- Sharon, as you ran out of the theater, ran out in the uh, after the first act. Sharon goes, uh, "I don't. I thought. I think we lost him. I think we lost him. We're gonna have to scrape him off the floor somewhere." <laughs> and you came back, and then we met, and you invited us to see you sing. And Sharon goes, "We're going just because he's cute." You know, we did, and then we saw you. And but what was different and what has happened in your work, in my opinion, is how your writing has just taken hold of your your your. Back then, you were covering a lot of things. You were singing other people's yeah. songs that you felt. Yeah. But now it's all so organic from yourself. It is, and it also ten years better the songwriter. I mean, yeah. and I think that I have focused on the process is understanding that you know, there are a lot of artists out there, a lot of independent artists, a lot of LGBT artists, and and I think uh, it all comes down to having a strong song, knowing your craft, just like when you create incredible characters in, in your script, and the structure of the story, mm-hmm. and how you tell it, to get into the nuts and bolts of it. I think I've really enjoyed that more than anything, and 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 it pays off because then now more and more I see songs, uh, easy paths to being licensed for television shows like recently with the Mob Wives and and uh, with a couple of other films that have been licensed recently. So I think it's all about having, you know, if you have a great song, it's going to have a life. And, and, I mean, and an honest song. An, and what what you tap into, and I think that's why we are, when you're, the true artistry is the universe speaks to you and you're not just, you, you get to be the vessel who tells a lot of people's stories. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, because I can't, I'm sure yeah. that people come up to you and go, "That was my story." Yeah, that one. Oh, re- and that's such an intention of how I try to write the songs too. I mean, I I, I I try to I actually give thought to the visuals of how other people. You know, I benefit from fans being very personal with me too. I mean, they come to me and tell me very intimate. I think it's because I'm very open and vulnerable with them. I tell them everything. They come and and. Uh, in, in return in kind, that kind of trust, and it's and I learn from them. I learn uh, what their thought processes are. With you know, at the end of the day, we all have different stories, but the same, the core human emotion is the same. So, kind of understanding well, you've, from that. You've written a lot of songs. Like you, you've <laughs> had one of the most successful independent Kickstarters or, or Indiegogo campaigns ever. Correct. Yeah, my and 2011 was in the top three most successful at the time. And so, yeah. you, so literally, uh, some of those songs that were were inspired by other were the people's... actual stories of the yeah. Kickstarters. Every song on that album was uh, uh, personalized dedication uh, based on the story of the, the, the backer. So I yeah. got to sit with them in Skype and the phone calls and hear their stories, get to know them personally, get to know what was important to them and the perspective in life and, and be able to translate not only just the, the content itself, but the personality of, of that individual, hopefully, translating in the music. So your life has so many chapters. It's basically a tr- book trilogy at this point. Did you think about <laughs> all those records, all that uh, growing up, and then all the record deals, and then The Apprentice, and then L.A., and yep. then ten years with Million Dollar Quartet, and then moving on and winning a Tony. We always have to th- winning a Tony. Oh, yeah, right. that was a that was yeah it was that a little little, old little thing. event a little event. Right. But so looking, I at, actually brought it today. Did you really? Girl, no. I would I would have it super glued <laughs> to my forehead like I was a unicorn. Yeah, I'd I thought, be everywhere. Thought Leslie oh. Jordan was in the house with his Emmy. What? <laughs> he traveled the country with that Emmy for a year. Everywhere I he bet went. He, I bet no. Um, but so <laughs> we talked about the musical element of this current album. But what? So what is the like exciting? Where are you in, in, in looking at the art? Like beyond the like, you know, we're stripping down and focusing on the piano and the vocal. Like what's, what's the, where are you speaking to? Like you, can you share some of the theme or? Absolutely. I think one of the most exciting things for me is reclaiming a piece of myself that I denied from the church. I, I grew up, mm. you know, starting and singing in church at eight years old. All I've ever wanted to do, my number one top dream of my heart was always and still is to heal through music. Mm. And when the Christian music world and the gospel music world, I didn't fit into that world, they wouldn't have me. Um, And I took my tail to Los Angeles and went through all of the crazy. I finally land home, back home, to understanding that now as a uh, 
nearly seven years sober man, as a licensed spiritual counselor, I can actually go back and create very appealing mainstream music and have it be uh, spiritually insightful, encouraging, and hopefully healing. So I want to be able to find a place that I, I, I guess is just me, you know, as an openly gay man, but also be able to speak to our life experiences in an inspiring, positive light that moves us forward and expands us spiritually. Um, and so I'm finally letting that sit because uh, recently in the last album, Imagine Paradise, Let It Go, which was used for a for a film called House Not Home, uh, which is a story about a transgendered uh, high school student. And, and The short film. Yes. I saw it. Oh, did you? Yes. Okay. Just so you know, at okay. Fusion Outfest here in LA. Oh, like, yeah, there, there was the yeah. end. You were played out through the credits. I was like, played I Played out her. through the credits. And that song has reached more people and had more of an impact than any of the love songs on the last album. And it's so directly about, like, self-forgiveness and self-love and, and embracing your individuality and knowing that you are perfectly created, mm. perfect just as you are, that to just go there felt really good to me. And I thought to myself, all right, I can have the great Adele love songs. I can have the heartbreak that people love with my voice. I can I can have that, but I don't have to leave people there. I can take a little bit of the album and go one step further and find a place of healing, of forgiveness, of resolve. Absolutely. Wait, yeah. please tell everyone who just called. That was Sarah Hunley <laughs> calling Just so y'all know. Juanita y'all, just called Juanita me. was I'm literally so trying to call the radio station. <laughs> she was trying to call. I had to decline it. Come on. That's amazing. I, I, I actually turned the ringer on earlier today for her because I knew I was expecting a call from her so I didn't want to miss it. For you, yes. Sorted Lives fan. So, Juanita just trying to call the radio station. We love Juanita. Don't we leave off? Oh, but, but you know, one, one thing that I, I was thinking when you're, you're talking there and you're talking yeah. about the church and, you know, one thing that, uh, that, that I talk so much to actors and teaching is to embrace our damage. Because oh, we, yeah. if, if you don't embrace the damage, if you just don't deal with it, if you just, uh, you know, if you say, I, I, I'm not going to, to utilize this in my work, you're not going to heal yourself, that uh -huh. word that you love, and you're not going to heal anybody else, you're and right. you're not going to touch them because you're going to deny that. So yeah. I, so many times I have said to, to actors when they have that emotional breakdown or whatever, and then they tell me where it came from, I go, okay, thank whomever caused yeah. that right now. Yeah. Because yeah. thank, I, yeah. you know, I remember actress Ronnie Claire Edwards saw Southern Baptist Sissies, and she said it must have just been so awful. And I said, yeah, well, you know, it it wasn't. It wasn't so awful, but the damage was was pretty, you know, pretty bad. Yeah. And uh, and I was able to to use that to to heal myself I first, think that not knowing it was to me about how it was healing for you to go through the process with Southern Baptist Sissies. I I always say pain is like an initiation into a greater wisdom it's it, to deny yourself that is is um is not living you know and it feels better it's okay when you're, to sit right? in the darkness of that it, it feels better to it's therapeutic it's yeah, your own absolutely. it's your own therapy yeah, it yeah, saves yeah. you some money yeah so <laughs> <laughs> for sure <clears throat> I'm sure people always find interesting, you know, people that are accomplished like you are. What is exciting to you in the popular music landscape right now? Like anybody that like, whether it's just for like feel good, for feel fun, but like is anybody, are you enjoying anybody? Well, I'm always, I, you know, I'm a huge fan of pop music. So anything that you're going to find on iHeartRadio and when it's Kiss FM, I'm going to be jamming to at the gym. But the things that really move me right now. I mean, I have to go yet again another year, another decade. I'm I'm pinpointing artists from the UK. It seems like the American market doesn't seem to to really create the the types of artists that get my attention the most. I, I can look back at Joss Stone, at Duffy, mm. at a Amy Winehouse, yes. Adele now, and Sam Smith, and Hozier. I mean, you think about the people who are actually living in that world that's compatible with what I'm doing in the mainstream sense. Yeah, um, they're not coming from America. Right, and that's actually a, 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 an interesting thing for me to note because the the new album is going to 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 maybe begin over there. Well, we're oh. going to have to wrap this up, and I want to do one thing before we do. But first of all, let's let's plug your your, your let's plug your shit. You're oh yes. Gonna be, we're, yes. First of all, you're going to be at Martinis Above Fourth. We love that club yeah. on uh, Thursday night. That's tomorrow night. Yeah, tomorrow. And there are uh, uh, very few tickets. I saw today. There's very few tickets left. Yeah. So grab those. Then you're going to one of my favorite rooms in Palm Springs. The purple room. The purple Palm room. Springs, yeah. I'm driving down to San Diego to one of your private uh, events to, at Mike on and David's morning. home. I'm so yeah. excited about that. And anything else? 
else coming and up? And Palm Springs is, is, I think it's nearly sold out. So do not delay if you want to come because it's you won't get it. But if there's any of the music, like you can find you everywhere on the interwebs at LeviChrist.com. Yeah. And and at Levi Christ. And tickets there at Levi Christ. Go to yeah, tour. Yeah, go to the tour page tour. at LeviChrist.com. All the information is and there. You can click through. He's on Twitter. Tickets. He's on Facebook. He's on everything. So yeah. I want to end this, this service. <laughs> I want to end it. God, God, it went by so fast. But I want to say, I want to ask you a question. W- willing to sing your favorite hymn right now. Absolutely. Something that maybe these three yeah. Baptist boys are for. I, take us with, to church. Can, can take us to church. Our, it's our benediction. So we're going to go out with Levi um, singing live. And as we head to that, you might just join in. We really do love uh, all you guys listening uh, to the show. We're super excited. And Levi will be joining us for a very sorted wedding. So he is He's continuing in the cast. He to plays- be a part of our family. Yes. He plays the anti-equality revival speaker. And, that, <laughs> I'm gonna speak and now we have song. a special message and right. song from Brother Levi okay, Christ. my favorite. Um, little piece. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. He is eyes on the sparrow, and I know He watches me. Oh my God! Well, that's our us. show, everybody. <laughs> Emerson and I are not mad at each other. I'm so glad to be back. Thank you, Levi Thanks Christ, for, for being me. on our show. Emerson, I love you. It is our pleasure. John, thank you, and we will see y'all next week. Bye bye. Now that you found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family. And the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBN 